Chattanooga Choo Choo, run it down again. Let's go. One, two. Back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, there was a huge romance about trains and train travel. Uh, it was the way rural people first began to dream of leaving their towns. It was the way out. Trains at that time were, were quite luxurious. I mean, you, they had dining cars and, and sleeping quarters, and uh, the train was a real symbol of, of escape uh, for Americans. And so there were a lot of train songs, actually. Chattanooga Choo Choo certainly being one of the most famous. Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Yes, yes. Track 29. Chattanooga Choo Choo was written by uh, Mac Gordon, who wrote the melody, and Harry Warren, who wrote the lyric. It was introduced by the Glenn Miller Orchestra. And luckily enough, in late 1941, Glenn Miller was in his first movie. It was a Sonia Heine ice skating flick called Sun Valley Serenade. And the band played it in the movie. And by the end of the year, by the end of 1941, it was the biggest song of the year. It was a huge, huge hit record for the Glenn Miller Orchestra. And bear in mind, December 7th, 1941, when, when it was a hit, is the day that we'll live in infamy, in the day that we entered World War II. The character in the song is going home to his lover. So it's a romantic travel song. It's like I'm going home, I'm going to, there's going to be a party at the station and I'll, after that I'm never leaving again. So take me home, Chattanooga Choo Choo, is the whole message of the thing. Which, if, with a nation mobilizing for war and all of that uncertainty in the air, it probably did strike people as, as, a, a, as a meaningful kind of a sentiment to have because I'm going to be leaving and, you know, and I want to go home. When you hear the whistle blowing eight to the bar, then you know that Tennessee is not very far. Shama Lola calling, gotta keep it rolling. Woo woo, Chattanooga, there you are. It's the first hit song of the war years. Uh, it uh, became so big that in February of 1942, it had sold uh, more than a million copies and it was the very first record ever certified as a million-selling record. And to commemorate that fact, RCA, which was the parent company of Bluebird, which is the label that it was on, RCA Victor made a gold record. They took a, a 78 RPM record, painted it gold to commemorate those millions in sales, and presented it on live radio on the Chesterfield Show in February of 1942 to Glenn Miller. And speaking for RCA Victor, we're mighty proud of that Chattanooga choo-choo and the man who made the record, Glenn Miller. And Chattanooga Choo Choo certainly put on steam and breezed right through that million mark by over 200,000 pressings. And we decided that Glenn should get a trophy. The best one we could think of was a gold record of Chattanooga. And now, Glenn, it's yours with the best wishes of RCA Victor Bluebird Records. Well, thank you, Wally. That's really a wonderful present. So, there you have the first gold record. All aboard. Chattanooga, Chattanooga. Get aboard. Chattanooga, Chattanooga. Chattanooga, choo-choo. Won't you choo-choo me home? Chattanooga, choo-choo. Glenn Miller had had its many hits before Chattanooga Choo Choo. It's just that for some strange reason, this one really caught the public's imagination. He had dozens of hit records by 1941, um, but this thing became a real phenomenon. It was the biggest song of that year, and it was on the charts for something like 23 weeks. I mean, like months and months it was on the charts. So uh, it was a big, big deal, even for Glenn Miller, who had so many hits. It just seems to be one of those songs that just doesn't go away. It's so instantly memorable, for one thing. It's just one of those puts its finger on the pulse of the nation kind of songs. Chattanooga was a big railroad center. It's, uh, it's on the Tennessee River, so it's a transportation hub to start with. And it's a key city in that it is kind of a gateway city into Appalachia. 
as well as the Gateway City into Georgia. So it's a really sort of confluence kind of a place. And so they did build this beautiful, big, elaborate train station there, uh, which is still there. And uh, it's a monument. It's a monument to the power of what railroads were. You know, the word Chattanooga is musical somehow. I mean, it's just sort of this goofy, only in America kind of word. And it's one of those, it has, it has its own built-in sound, its own built-in romance. It's just one of those those names that sort of fits in songs. It's very melodious somehow when you just say it. And uh, I think that is part of why it, it figures in songs, because it, it sounds musical. The very name sounds musical. And so the song affixes itself indelibly to the city, and it has been part of the city's culture ever since 1941, for 75 years now. Thank you.